Time to talk about the awesome new global performance cache, also called the hash cache, and its companion, the persistent disk cache, and show you how to take advantage of the strengths of these new features to dramatically speed up the way you work in After Effects. Here we see a comp I made using the new 3D features. If we look at a RAM preview from one of our custom views, the cat clock is made up of extruded illustrator layers and has a few animated elements, the tail, the eyes, and the clock hand sweeping along for 10 seconds. The eyes and the tail are each controlled with only a pair of keyframes. And then I told those keyframes to loop with a simple expression, although this demo would work exactly the same if I had copied and pasted the looping keyframes manually. If I switch to our other custom views, you'll see that I already have RAM previews generated for each of these views too. And After Effects has remembered the previews even as I've switched around from camera to camera in the same comp, which is awesome. Our main active camera view has not yet been rendered, however, and it'll take a couple minutes to preview this scene since it has a moving camera. So in order to keep moving this demo forward, I'll generate a preview of the active camera using the cache work area in background feature. This will save a temp copy of our comp in its current state, launch a second copy of After Effects, and then proceed to render frames to the persistent disk cache. Note that we get a progress report in the info window, and we can now continue to mess around in After Effects and even change settings in our comp in the meanwhile. The persistent disk cache is awesome. As you make changes in your project, After Effects caches the state of individual layers and entire frames of a scene. So when you change something, then undo back to a previous state of a scene, the cache remembers what you've done before and will fetch the last render instead of rendering from scratch. You set things up under Preferences, Media and Disk Cache. And here you can point the cache to your fastest drive and control how much space will be used. This is important because the cache stays on disk even after you quit and relaunch After Effects until it's forced out, either by eventually filling it up and replacing the older content with new stuff, or by your manually purging the cache with this button, which you might want to do to free up space at the end of a project, for example. I put a fast solid state drive on my computer just to hold my cache files, because the extra speed really helps when reading from the cache. We'll check out the results of our cache render shortly, but in the meanwhile, how does this relate to the global performance cache, aka hash cache? Well, the hash cache makes After Effects dramatically smarter about how it handles the rendering of frames in a scene as you work to speed up interaction and previews. To illustrate this, I'm going to break our clock by cutting the second keyframe here for the second hand. I'm also looking at custom view one, and we can confirm the hands are no longer moving, although the eyes and the tail are. If I jump to frame zero and generate a RAM preview, you'll see that After Effects calculates only about a second of this 10 second movie. And suddenly the rest of the comp goes really fast. And then the preview is finished and plays in real time. What happened there? Well, if we switch to custom view three, let's try it again, only this time I'm gonna use the space bar to preview so we can watch the cache indicators fill in. Already there are several green frames spaced out in the timeline, and if I tap the space bar, look how this is filling in. What's up with that? Well, you may recall I mentioned earlier that I generated the eyes and tail animation by looping keyframes. And since After Effects is now smart enough to know that this frame is identical to this frame, and this frame, and this frame, etc. It fills in the timeline much more quickly. And as you can see, you can play back an animated element much more quickly as a result. Let's switch to custom view two and preview a little more. But now note, if I move layers around after they've been cached, After Effects is smart enough to bring the cache along for the ride. So even if you reposition cached elements in time, after Effects will process them more quickly the next time you have to interact with them. I'll put those layers back where they belong. So our background cache is finished rendering, but so what? If I switch to our active camera now, I don't see anything here at all. Well, you may recall we cut a keyframe from our second hand 
and broke our clock after I started the background render. So what's on screen here doesn't match what we cached. But if I go to the last keyframe and paste that keyframe back in, look what happens. This blue bar appears showing us that these frames, while not in RAM, are in fact cached to disk. And because of this fast SSD, you can see that I can play these cached frames from disk in real time by just hitting the spacebar. So because of the persistent disk cache, After Effects is smart enough to remember this earlier state of the composition and fetch the frames that were already cached. And in fact, if we switch to our other views, you'll see that After Effects even remembers all of these RAM previews that I had generated at the top of this lesson. So the new performance cache and persistent disk cache will really speed up your day-to-day -day work with After Effects CS6.